it's for night like this that I'm glad to be back in Rome, seeing Lazio beating Bayern at the Stadio Olimpico. It's an incredible experience. And uh, Alistair, what a game. No one could see that coming or we were too pessimistic. Uh, we probably were too pessimistic, but for a good reason. I mean, yeah, like that was that was kind of when I was leaving the stadium last night and trying to kind of sum up how this felt. I was like, it's, it was almost more like disbelief than anything else. It was like the fact that they actually won that game. My expectations or my hopes were really just that it would still be alive going into the game, the second leg. Because three years ago, it, it was dead, very dead. So to come away with a victory, honestly, on reflection, I think that's one of, if not the greatest Lazio win I've ever seen live in terms of expectation versus delivery. It was an incredible night. Not only winning, but, I mean, Sari even complained that we didn't score another goal. We had the chances. Let's not forget, Bayer was one man down. So really... Finishing this game and saying, "Well, we would we could have scored another goal." It's <laughs> simply uh, let, let's not forget that we played against Bayern Munich, not you know Galatasaray or another small team in Europe. For some bookies, for some expert, Bayern is the fourth best team in the in the Europe in the Champions League this year. So winning, keeping the the hope alive, it's unbelievable. Well. Can I just ask you straight away, how do you feel about that? Like, the fact that it was 1-0, were you disappointed? No, no, I was <laughs> obviously happy. And I think the biggest thing is that, yes, we could have scored more goals at the end of the game. We had chances. But I thought, and this is, makes this victory even bigger, we had Zakani out, Rovella out. We lost Vecino in the warming up. Uh, Patrick wasn't fit. We had so many players absent. You know, last year, two years ago, three years ago, imagine Lazio playing against Bayern Munich without three or four starters. We didn't stand a chance, right? Instead, this year, not only we stand a chance, we won. And now we're talking about, well, if Isaac Sen scored that goal, if Felipe Anderson scored that goal, you know, it's crazy if you think about it. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I don't think that's an aspect that people have really paid that much attention to. Because, uh, and this always happens, but the attention generally has been more on Bayern Munich and their defeat to Leverkusen and the position they're in and people protesting Tuchel and all of this stuff. But you're right, this wasn't a full-strength Lazio team. And this was also a Lazio team that very recently, where we're talking about not being in crisis, but being in a bad run to the point where people are getting very frustrated that nil-nil draw with Napoli, followed by that defeat to Atalanta, really had a lot of fans kind of with their head in their hands thinking, well, what the hell has happened to this team since last season? All of a sudden, they come back and play like that. And that was, let's be honest, that was like Lazio's, Lazio of last season, but the very best version of Lazio of last season in terms of the organization, the defensive work rate, the structure, taking the chance when it came. Okay, like you said, maybe could have got more, but... That was, like, the best version of Lazio we've seen this season, I would say, by a mile. And I don't know if it comes back to the same thing of, like, in, in a week where Claudio Lotito is, as again, been coming out and saying, you know, kind of, this is a great team. It's just all in their heads. And I guess it's in his interest to say that. But then you see a game like last night, and you're like, maybe he's got a point. <laughs> because when they are that focused... They are so, they can be such a good team. We've seen it in big games so much over the last 18 months, and that was the biggest example yet. So, yeah, they, we need to find a way of getting them to focus like that all the time, I guess. And we didn't mention one thing that, for me, it's incredible if you sit down and think about it. Bayern Munich didn't have a shot on target. One, not even one. Provedel didn't make a single save. And we were talking about Bayern Munich, not Frosinone or Cagliari. And correct me if I'm wrong, this is just the second time from 2015, something yeah. like that. Last time was against Liverpool, who is a decent club, I would say, right? Yeah. So this tells you how good Lazio played yesterday. And Bayer had the chance. They, they wasted a couple of good chances, but they were never, ever able to shot on target. This is incredible. I mean, we considered three goals to Atalanta. We considered two goals to Salernitana and we didn't create, we didn't allow Bayern to shot on target. 
I know, yeah. <laughs> You've stolen the best stat I had for today as well, haven't <laughs> Um Yeah, and and look at the look at this team, I'm sorry, but I have to come back to it again. Okay, there's Prov- Provadel and Romagnoli there who are a big part of uh, the defence that was 22 clean sheets, that was the whole story last season behind finishing second was how, how good they were from the back. But now you look at the rest of them, it's like Mario Gila. What a comeback story. I mean, where's that come from? And he starts in centre-back, playing as Harry Kane, Muziala, all these guys, and had a great game. Um, you know, this Adam Marisic isn't the Adam Marisic of years gone by. Elsa Tussai's come back out of nowhere. I did, did call it in advance. I said I think he might start this game. But he had, he had a good game. He's kind of coming yeah. back into the reckoning. I mean, everyone had a good game, really. But it's just amazing to think that, yeah, okay, there were all these injuries and so on. But this has actually... It's not even like there were these injuries, but they can rely on the rest of the team being, you know, this structure that's been in place all season. This team has changed quite a lot throughout this season. And I think Sadi has to be given huge credit for this. He really has to, because it wasn't just about the individual component parts. Last night was about the discipline, the organisation, the strategy, the execution, him getting his messages to those players clearly. And there are a lot of good individual performances in there, but I, I think Sadi has to be the one who comes out with more credit than anybody, to be honest. How bizarre is this? We switch from, oh my God, Hila is starting to, oh my God, Hila has got injured. <laughs> you know, this is, this is the, the sum of the season. I mean, who could expect to be happy to have Hila starting in a Champions League game against Harry Kane? You know, this is incredible. He played really, really good. Uh, Romagnoli, we know him, so it's not a surprise. But Lazio was really focused, and this, I think, is the biggest difference we can take. And play fast football, because if you play slowly, like we saw Lazio a lot this season, and I think this is the biggest problem, you're going to struggle against Bayern. Instead, fast ball, and maybe the thing that Cataldi start help Lazio playing so fast, but... I mean, you were talking about his eye, Gila, um, Guendouzi, man yeah, of the match. Work our way up the pitch. <laughs> I mean, everybody, everybody, at least of the starting eleven. I mean, the, the biggest concern is that. Uh, and one of the reasons why I think we didn't score another goal was our substitute wasn't at the same level of our starters. Chiro came off, and I think we both agree, Chiro was knackered. He couldn't play anymore. Um uh, Luis Alberto as well stopped running since the beginning of the second half. And the problem when you have Roel out, Vecino out, etc., etc., we didn't have that many options. Pedro came in, he had a huge chance. But we saw it. It's not the Pedro of the last season, right? So I think with Rovella, with Vecino, etc., we probably could have finished this game, scored another goal. With this substitution, we struggle. We, we didn't have the same energy, the same quality from the bench that we had this season. Yeah, and um, I think from, from, from being in the stadium last night, you could tell how tired the team were getting as this half went on. So I think you can give them credit for that, for not, you know, some people will be like, oh, come on, you've got to, you know, really put the hand on the throat in that moment. And 1-0 is probably not going to be enough in, in Munich, blah, blah, blah. Okay, maybe it won't be, but you still have to be careful the other way. I mean, Bayern still had a couple of chances with 10 men and still wanted to go and yeah. get back into that match themselves. So any sort of win from this game is an incredible, incredible result. There's no other way of looking at it. And I just have to shout out the two players, I guess, who have come out come away with the most credit, which is Brenda Zia, you mentioned, and Felipe Anderson, because I, I don't understand how they were still running at the end because those two... I mean, Anderson was crazy. He was he was basically playing as a left back for half of the first half, but then going up with every single counter attack. He was up there, up, coming back, making interceptions. If anyone ever needs evidence of why Maurizio Sarri is obsessed with this guy and always wants to play him, it's because he can do that kind of game. And so many people focus with Anderson about his the freestyle samba football stuff he can do, where he does little one touch nutmegs and little flicks and tricks. People love that stuff. Um, the more Brazilian side of his game, but it's the more Italian side of his game, the the discipline and, and tactical organisation and, and defensive nous and all that kind of stuff that makes him such an important player for this team. I mean, it was an incredible performance from him. I totally agree. And, uh, you know, he's becoming more and more uh, 
player that helps the team. You know, I don't know how many balls he recovered in the first half. He he defended so well, and you're not, you're not used to see, especially a Brazilian winger defending so well. So that's one of the key about the match yesterday and about Felipe Anderson. He's been terrific defending, which is, should be a surprise, but it's not if you saw Lazio playing so far this season. He's been amazing. So this is really, really important. And uh, one thing we should mention is Bayern didn't lose to an Italian club since 2011. So it's not yesterday. This, is, this tells you how big an achievement Lazio had yesterday. And again, Lazio had Rovella out, Vecino out, etc. Bayern Munich had pretty much all the players available. Now you can complain why the league didn't start, etc. But they had all the players. And, and we said it on Monday, right? This is going to be a tougher game for us because they already lose against, lost against Leverkusen. And Neuer said it on the press conference before the game. We'll be 100% focused because we already lost against Leverkusen. We won't make the same mistakes again. So it's not that we face a Le- uh, Bayern Munich that was, you know, we already threw, we, we focus on the next game. No, they were 100% focused on this game. Yeah. And still, we managed to play better than them and to win it. So this is huge. Neuer also said Lazio aren't a big club, so <laughs> hi Emmanuel Neuer. I'm sure he's. I'm sure he's watching. Uh, <laughs> like like uh, Lukito is watching every night. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, look, we. Uh, I guess we will. We could talk in a second about the second leg and the chance and so on. But I think one of the things this can do to the the squad is really prove to them how good they can be if they ever needed proof of that. But I think they do know that because we've intermittently seen them get big results and. We know how last season they beat all of the, the top seven in, in Serie A. We know that they've, they've been able to stand up in big games, but this is a whole other level. This is only Lazio's second ever uh, Champions League knockout win. The other was against Valencia in 2000, the year we won the Scudetto. So, I mean, a whole generation has passed, a whole quarter of a century has passed since we did what we did last night. Um, and there was obviously a lot of focus on what happened three years ago in the comparisons between those games. But no, the actual comparison here is more to what happened in 99-2000. I mean, that's that's the level we're talking about. And it almost doesn't really matter what happens in a way in the second leg because they've proved last night that they can do this. Uh, like you said, for all those reasons, for the, the t- team they're up against, but the motivation that team has, the ability the quality that team had there were so many reasons for them to come here and absolutely smash Lazio and really wanted to and Lazio still won that game so even if they lose the second leg 5-0 they proved a huge point to us but also to themselves last night uh, talking about the second leg two things I wanted to ask you first Miro Klose said it's going to be very difficult I think the first 15 minutes will be the key. They will try to score immediately. If Lazio resists those first 15, 20 minutes, then Lazio has a chance, especially because they're going to start pushing harder and you're going to have chances, you're going to have counter-attack opportunity. So, do you agree with this thing about Milo Klose? The second, Thomas Müller said, Lazio wasted a big opportunity and I expect them to play Italian-style football in the second land, so very defensive mind football. What do you reply to Thomas Müller? I mean, he never saw Lazio playing, obviously, if he says these things, right? Yeah, but do, do you know, you see this every time that, like, there's a major tournament with the Italian national team or whether it's Champions League with any Italian side, people will always say these things um, because Italian football still not really managed to shake off that reputation of being ultra-defensive. Look, Lazio's win last night was based on a defensive game plan, but that's fine. That is them being smart. That's the only way they were going to win this game last night. They couldn't have played openly and expressively last night and, and hope to uh, hope to get that result. I think that they've given a blueprint of how you beat Bayern, and the difference in the second leg is obviously going to be that you're away from home. We know Lazio's away record is terrible. We know it will be pretty hostile because... The fans in Munich are used to success, but they're also going to be pretty angry about what happened last night, and they're also pretty angry generally about what's happening at that club this season. 
So they're going to have to deal with a lot of that kind of coming from the stands. But in terms of an actual kind of tactical blueprint, I think they could actually go and pretty much try and play the same way and that gives them the same hope. I don't think they have to adapt hugely, which is kind of encouraging. It's, it's their best chance. Defend well, work as a team, keep, those, uh, keep the distances as tight as they were last night, restrict them as much as you can and try and get, take those chances on the counter when they come. I mean, it was perfect last night, if, and so I don't think they need to change much, to be honest. If anything, they'll be stronger with players coming back. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a very important point. We have we have to hope to recover a couple of players, especially Zakani. But we didn't mention Isaacson. My son calls it football because he's so skilled, etc. What do you take of his performance yesterday? He he's very dangerous. He creates chances. I think he needs to finish this because yesterday he had a huge opportunity, one against one against Neuer. We were talking that Neuer is a big body, so it's not very easy when he stands in front of you. But Champions League, you have to take those chances. And this is not the first time that Isaacson creates and doesn't finish, doesn't finalize the, the chance he creates. It's true, and I think I feel like if he improved that side of his game, he would be a serious player, because even though he missed that chance, or Neuer made a really good save, uh, he's still involved in everything positive that happens. Yeah. It's still Isaacson that wins the penalty, that ultimately wins the game. It's still Isaacson who is really causing all, every problem for Bayern in a certain sense, because they really want to push right up the pitch and attack. But every time the ball's getting out to this guy, he's causing issues to them. He's either getting past a player or he's get, working the ball nicely out of space and kind of creating uh, a counter-attack. He's a problem. He's a real problem for defenders to have to deal with, and he forces the issue. He tries to make things happen. It's the same against uh, Cagliari, where even if he's not scoring himself, he's just so involved in the positive moves that Lazio are making. And it's a, it's a kind of weird trait that he's kind of so involved in all this good stuff without ever kind of being the guy who's finishing it off himself. But if he can, if he can find a little bit more composure, I mean, he's going to be a hell of a player. I have to remember it's his first season and... Um, he's 21? Yeah, uh, I can't remember exactly, but yeah, very young guy, completely new to all this. So it's it's really promising debut season, I would say. He reminds me a lot of the first season of Zaccagni with Lazio. You can see he could become very dangerous, but he still missed too many opportunities. Zaccagni first year with Lazio scored like five, six goals in all in the second part of the season. But one against one, he's so dangerous. I mean, Zakani, even if he hadn't played in the last half month or so, one month and a half or so, he's still like the top three player who received more fouls. And I think that his accent is slowly uh, gaining points there, getting in the top five. So I think when Zakani will be back, if we can play his accent on the other side, Lazio could be very dangerous, obviously. We mentioned Felipe Anderson. He's so important for the defending. But with Zakania Isaac, we can be very, very dangerous attacking. So this is something we have to consider, especially with Chiro Mobili, who's coming back. We didn't talk about Chiro. He scored a very important penalty. He said after the match, well, I wasn't too sure about this penalty, but I saw Neuer moving earlier, and so I just put it on the, on the other side easy. But I was a little bit scared. What a game Chiro played. And He's more and more becoming a leader. He's showing us why he's so important for this club, right? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Chiro just keeps proving everybody wrong every single time that there's a doubt put on him. We've ourselves doubted him a bit at times this season. His age catching up with him is, is he's finally going to have to accept a, a more kind of reduced role in this team. And then he comes back again. What a week for him. 200 Serie A goals over the weekend and then beating Bayern with, with his penalty. He said himself he's quite nervous hitting that penalty because how important it was not taking one that important for a while. And this is the thing around, like, even the year he won the Golden Boot, people are saying, oh, yeah, but how many of them are penalties and so on? That was a great example last night. But scoring a penalty is not easier. When you're up against Manuel Neuer in a Champions League last 16 match, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, excellent. It's so good to see him back, see him proving people wrong again and... I don't know. I, I don't think those doubts will ever go away. Even if Lazio win the Champions League, people will still say, remember six months at Bayern Borussia Dortmund when he wasn't very good 15 years ago or whatever it was. So, 
Good on him. And it was a real love fest last night. I couldn't resist in my match report doing a kind of Valentine's Day Chiro Immobile loving kind of uh, theme. So, yeah, but it was love in the air last night. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't mention the atmosphere was amazing. Uh, Olimpico pretty much sold out. Uh, incredible choreography in the two choreography, Curva Nord, Curva Sud. Amazing fan chanting all game long. It was even good to have closer there back here in, at the stadium. Great, great atmosphere. Um, I want to close with this because all season long I kept our listener, most of our listeners wrote us, ah, 433 is a uh, uh, not a good tactic anymore. Everybody knows how Sari balls play. Every know, everybody knows how to win against Sari. Well, it looks like there's no a TV in Germany or they didn't have a recording machine because it looks like Tukel didn't have, eh, didn't know how to stop Ch Lazio and Sari ball, right? Yeah. That's where, yeah. And that goes back to what I was saying. I think he's the one who's the man of the match last night from the way he's executed that game plan. And, and you know, again, said it a thousand times but there there's a lot more complexity than just the way you, the number you the, the order you put those numbers in whether it's 433 or 3433 three, whatever you're saying it doesn't really matter it's about how those players are going to go out and apply it and last night was an ultimate example of of what he's done with this particular Lazio team which I think he's finally probably by now got people to stop talking a bit about Sally Ball and his Napoli team and all this stuff and people have just realized this is a different thing because do, we do play very yeah. different football to that team. It's not the same kind of idea, but it's it's still very good in its own right. And he's found the super strength of this team, which I think is playing the way they did last night. That is the way that this team can outperform everyone else. Their home record, their clean sheet record at home is incredible still this season. That's the superpower. And by the way, just before we finish... I, I, I gotta get some credit in the bank. I was there last night. Okay, we beat Bayern Munich in the Champions League knockout game. So next time this guy starts saying, "If I go to the stadium, we lose," I'm just gonna remind you of last night every time. <laughs> we have to finish saying, Sunday there's a very important game, very difficult. Yeah. Against Bologna, we have concern because Vecino didn't play yesterday. Zakani could be out still. Patrick just came in, but Sari said he's not 100% fit. We don't know if Rovella will be able to play. Uh, we have a lot of question mark, and Bologna is playing very good football. And let's be let's be honest, this is a game that could change the tie for the Champions League situation. Very important, very difficult coming off a Champions League game like this. It's not easy for Lazio to keep the mindset on and not, you know, start thinking, "Hey, we beat Bayern. What a great match we had last mm -hmm. night." And don't play focus against Bologna, who would, could be a very dangerous mistake. Yeah, and they're flying. I mean, look if look at the table. They are one of the top four rivals. That, there's no other way of putting it. By this stage of the season, I think we can say that they are firmly in that discussion. The good thing, I guess, is that they were playing last night as well, so there's no kind of extra preparation time on their part. The bad thing is they did win again. <laughs> so they are flying at the moment. They have the second most influential Scottish person in Italian football in their team. So I don't want to ask who is the person. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look, between Ferguson and Orzolini's hit a red-hot streak, uh, Xerxes is a really good player. You know, they've got just, yeah, it's a really, really decent team. I don't think there's any risk of... Um, underestimating them as an opponent. It's more about how do you reset after yeah. the high of last night and go back to a lunch match, which is always a bit of a sleepy affair, I find. These 12-30 games are a bit slow often. Yeah, it's a big test for this team. Yeah, even because, let's be honest, uh, the energy mentally and physically you consume in a Champions League game against Bayern, it's bigger, much bigger than playing a Serie A game against you know, yeah. so that, that's that's going to have a huge impact. But you make me think about Orsolini was has been linked with Lazio last summer, and then we go and sign Isaacson. Do you still believe that was the right decision for Lazio? Even looking at the future, you know, Isaacson is younger. Uh, so would you still do that thing, or would you go and sign Orsolini instead? <laughs> Remember that Carson is watching you. <laughs> Isaacson all the way. I've always gone for Danish talent, haven't I? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, Orzolini's not um, been in this form all season long, has he? And he is a player who's quite hot and cold throughout his career, which is why 
a guy that talented, with all due respect, is at Bologna, not at Inter at this stage, because he has amazing hot streaks, and then he'll kind of go quiet for a long time. But at the moment, he's in one of those hot streaks, so should we make it like the Chiro v. Kane thing? Is is it going to be Orsolini against Isaacson on, on Sunday there? And then Zaccagni plays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we can wrap it up here. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Again, thanks for your support. And remember, memberships start at $2 a month at patreon.com slash Lazio Lounge. Thanks for your support. And we'll be back Monday after Lazio Bologna, another very important game. And let's not forget that next week, Alistair, we are playing against Torino. The match was skipped because of the Supercoppa Italiana. So it's a very tough schedule for Lazio coming up in this last month or so. So... Keep in touch and let's hope that Lazio will be able to play again like they did yesterday against Bayern. Take care. Cheers.